Hello everyone, welcome to Humblewood, Heroes of the Humblewood, a Patreon campaign. Everyone that you see here on the screen is a member of our Patreon. Thank you so much to all of our Patreons. Because of them, everything that we do here is possible. You are currently watching episode one of our brand new adventure. If you would like to see episodes of our other campaigns, they are all available on our YouTube. You can use exclamation point YouTube in the chat for more information about that. You'll also find this episode and future episodes of this campaign over there as well. If you want to interact with the game, there's a couple of ways you can do so. Just by hanging out, you can redeem channel points for free. That can grant a blessing to a player of your choice. It is essentially a pocket re-roll in a dire moment where something just doesn't go quite right. They have a chance to throw the dice again, perhaps to get a more favorable outcome. However, it is not guaranteed. Or if you'd like to include an element of fate into the narrative, every $10 guarantees a draw of the deck of many things to the player of your choice. And we also do have $5 for each natural 20, which is a guaranteed success for those hard hitting moments where they need to do a little extra damage or they need to make sure that things go the way that they want to. That all ado, let's jump right into it. Let's introduce our players for the very first time. Please tell me who you are, where we can find you, and tell me a little bit about your character. Start off with Matthew, hi. Oh, turn my mic down. Hey guys, I'm Matthew, um, or you can find me most places as B Street Holmes. Um, I don't do so much on YouTube anymore, but you guys can find me in Stella's Discord uh, and on uh, twi uh, Twitter. Um, and uh, I'm going to be playing Ratchet, uh, who is a uh, raptor archer and very fond of his alone time so working in a group is going to be an interesting experience oh i'm so excited thank you very much and you can find b street's links there in the chat we'll pop on over to geek dice hello hi i'm geek dice you can find me on x at geek underscore dice i love dnd dnd is good for you dnd is good for me get into some dnd um, today for this campaign, I am playing a Dusk Corvum wizard. It's a large uh, raven-like person, and uh, my name is Leif Woodshaper. I'm a wizard, and I'm going to save the world. Excellent. Thank you very much. And joining us back after many, many years, we were able to join together with a one-shot many years ago, but welcome back, JR. Hi. How are you? Who are you playing? Uh, I'm good. Uh, it's, uh, thank you for having me. Um, I'm playing uh, character Hubert Putnami. Um, he's a Strig warrior. Um, um, yeah, he's of a different sort. Um, I guess still kind of rolling with that, and, and but probably more fighter paladin type. Excellent. Can't wait to see him in action. Pop on over every, to... Yeah. Everyone in Humblewood, though, is neutral or, or good alignment. So there really aren't any evil characters. Oh, there yeah. are. There um, are gonna I just barely some. hang out on Stella's Discord. That's really about it. Excellent. Thank you very much. We'll pop on over to V. Hi. Hey, I'm V Vertigo Cross. I'm a variety Twitch streamer. I play or hang out or do whatever I tend to feel like. I have a bird behind me that likes to scream. Her name is Lavelli. Uh, for the stream today and on Humblewood, I will be playing as Jack Hart, a mischievous little uh, fox who likes to get in trouble and cause a lot of trouble. They are a bard and a dancer. Excellent. Thank you very much. And last but not least, Zombie. Hello. Hello. I can be at least it's fine. Hello. I'm Jacob. I'm Zombie MZ. One of the names that to call me. I'm the Lore Keeper and Captain Z of the Good Ship Clip. I probably do too many clips. That's up to your own discretion. Uh, today I am playing uh, Leon Breeze, who is a wolf uh, who was raised by Mopox 
and his whole spiel is that he is a fighter, but a professional wrestler as well. He is his goal in life is to become the greatest professional wrestler that you've ever seen. And I got a special little voice that I'll debut later on. Um, but uh, if you are so inclined and you haven't already, please go ahead and follow me on Twitter at ZombieFighter89. There you will find a pinned tweet with a business card made by the lovely Lady May. Uh, in that tweet as well, there is a Google Doc sheet. And in that Google Doc sheet is all of the different works that I've done throughout uh, video editing, Twitch clipping, promo videos that I've done for other games that I've been on here for Stella, including this one, or including ones I will be doing for this, which will start after this particular stream. Um, so yeah, if you know anyone who's looking for work, I'm always looking for work. I'd love to do some editing for you. Uh, yeah. Excellent. Thank you very much. And with that, we will jump into it. Play the scary music. From a black screen, we see a single word appear. It says, Introduction. The earth beneath Layla felt unusually warm. She reached down to confirm and pulled back in pain immediately. <sighs> Her feathers were seared lightly. The season had been unusually dry. But this was a frightening temperature. After a closer look, it seemed like the ground itself was glowing. Crack. Leia's eyes went to the sound. The large tree that she'd played in as a child had fallen, and smoke began to re raise from its remains. Go, oh, her mind yelled, and she listened, rushing towards home. Get to them before... Suddenly... Flames burst forth, traveling at an unearthly velocity through Leia's perch. The perch meant the world to her, but in the vast expanse of the wood, it was small and unimportant. Too insignificant for the perch guards to come out of their outpost here this far reach. Her heart tightened, knowing that the remote settlement wouldn't be warned in time, and that aid would not be close by. Her hands began to move without thought as she whispered the words of her grandmother. It wouldn't be enough. She wouldn't be able to live with herself if she didn't at least try. When taught to her, the spell was meant to help farms through rainless seasons. It wasn't intended to be used defensively. Droplets of a lost cause formed between her fingers. Conjured water whoosh, whoosh, fell to the ground evaporating as soon as it hit the steaming forest floor. As she concentrated, a strong, warm gust touched her face. It's Altus. It must be, she thought. The amaranthine of storms was bringing rain to quench this hateful wildfire. She looked to the sky, frantic, searching for more signs of any changing weather. Barely able to register what she saw, her arms dropped to her sides in defeat. Flying balls of fire were filling up the sky. A swarm broke off, headed in her direction. Leia sank to her knees, hoping with her last thoughts that someone would save Humblewood before it all burned. We open our story somewhere far less calamitous on Sleepy Meadowfen. Meadowfen has been a very quiet place for as long as anyone can remember. And life here goes very slowly. Recently, it has fallen on harder times. The seasonal rainfalls haven't arrived and the fields running barren. To make matters worse, trade wagons sent to provide relief have gone missing, fueling rumors of bandits prowling the roadways. Fire-based creatures are venturing closer to the village than ever before. A week ago, you all heard of an ominous black plume of black smoke rising to the north. 
to such intensity that it blotted out the sun. Few brave villagers had left Meadowfen to investigate, but they haven't returned. The source of the smoke for now remains unknown. You all know the sleepy village of Meadowfen to be the perfect place for aspiring adventures who dream of fantastical quests across Humblewood to come together. The recent chaos surrounding the settlement here provides ample opportunity to get anyone's feet wet. This is where the journey begins, as the group of you are found in the village square of Meadowfen. You might remember in our session zero that we had a small little encounter. We met with a merchant, a wandering traveler. She wanted to get to Meadowfen. In the middle of the night, the group of you escorted Oakley to Meadowfen safely, and you went your separate ways. It is now morning, and the village around you is beginning to bustle into life. Marketplace is opening, and you have the smell of fresh bread on the breeze, as slowly the village yawns awake. Who do we see in the village square, and what are you doing? Hmm. Well... So I you can go for a ski day. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, I was reading something. <laughs> so I think Leif, Leif Woodshaper, um, my dust corvin wizard, is in the square with his friends. The uh the small group of uh young folk that he grew up with here in this village would include Todd, Taj, I think. I'm looking at the names of the NPCs. I'm, I know at least Taj was my one of my contacts. I had several. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and our, our small group of friends is just hanging out in the square. It's kind of like the fun thing to do. It's a public place. Everybody's coming and going. And this is a place to be seen, you know, and we're, we're hopeful to see some of those young ladies that, that live here in the area. They come with their families or they come together to the market. You know, we just kind of hang around and look cool. And of course, we want to be seen. So that's that's kind of our thing. You know, we're still coming into our maturity. Um, so we're, we're just like, uh, yeah. Hey, how you doing? Good to see you. I'll so be here when you come back. The group of you are just kind of loitering in this very public <laughs> space. There's four of you. There's Taj, the hedge. So we see this pretty uh, strongly built hedgehog person. And uh, they are currently wearing the colors of the New Bloom Order. You know that they're a part of this Druidic Order that uh, Hodge has recently become an initiate for. Uh, you, the wardrobe is kind of like tapestry, or sorry, a uh, tabard. Tabard that comes across his chest and normally it would be kind of slung on the back, but this has been custom modified for their hedge body. And it fits them pretty comfortably, very loosely. You see essentially a golden acorn on the front and behind it is this dark green five petaled blossoming flower. That is the symbol of the New Bloom Order that you're quite familiar with. Next to Taj is Gamut, the servant, very stalwart but rather lanky individual. He still hasn't really grown into his form quite yet, but has basically like big hooves big hands so you know he's going to eventually be built like a brick house but he's not there yet you have flair who's a gerbine the uh gerbine individual has these large mouse-like ears much larger than his small squarish face and he's sort of lingering looking over at the stand of pastries nearby the last is brillo don't remember what you said brillo is Yep, I think actually Brillo was an NPC druid that lives far away. Right, yes. Uh, Brillo lives in Ash Barrow. That's right. Uh, Brillo is not here. So it's just the four of you. Hodge, Gamut, Blair, and Leaf. Hey, what, that girl next to you, what, what's her name? Hey, come back here. You see... <laughs> You see this Luma, this dove lady. She 
looks over her shoulder at the group of you and then just sort of shays away. Her beak turned up, unimpressed by the this gangly group of young folk here. Did you see that? Did you see how she responded? <laughs> what else do we see here? So witnessing all of this, the uh, the shy and naive interactions that group of four is doing, Jack turns into predator mode and just slides right up next to Leaf. Whoa. And uh, they're going to try to uh, riz up Leaf and try to give them the confidence to go after someone way out of their league. <laughs> <clears throat> Um, Come on, oh. you were only a few steps away. You just have to show a bit more confidence when you push. Oh, well, she'll, she'll be back. I, I can try again. <clears throat> With that, I'll try again. <laughs> <laughs> With that, Jack, as you approach the group of uh, young villagers here, you catch the eye of someone that is at a dwelling. This appears to be a much larger establishment than the smaller houses that surround it. It looks kind of like a townhouse of some, sorry, a town hall of some kind. Uh, at the very front, there is a walking chair and in it is an individual who uh, is kind of like older, a lot, grayer in the feathers and they resemble a turkey person and they sort of have these like very heavy tired eyes that are entirely unamused as they see you engaging with this group of youngsters and he just kind of like scratches at his his a uh, gullet here a bit and just tiredly looks away unimpressed he does have an air of wisdom and Gravitar around him. Jack gives them a flash of a grin, teeth showing her uh, silver canine flashing in the light. Roll me... Roll me a performance check here. First check of the game. <laughs> to see if you can leave an impression. Roll the 10. Nope, they don't even look back at you. Your your teeth happen to glint the second that they look away. This individual, Magic. Gallus, does not look at you again. <laughs> As well, this there's only one thing to do, and that's to give Leaf a shove on the back towards someone. Okay. Uh, I think as you shove Leaf, perhaps Leaf accidentally bumps into Ratchet. Uh... Ratchet is not focused on this. There's frankly too many people in the town square for him, but he needs to purchase some more arrows. And he is sort of not like shoving, but he's making very focused headway through the crowd as this happens. Um, as he heads towards one of the shops, he knows will basically sell him his stuff and let him leave. Yeah, unfortunately, hey. in the way. <laughs> we yeah. Hey, you lose your balance. watch it. So so I think Leif gets, f fully runs into Ratchet, and Ratchet's probably built quite a bit and, you know, is, is stacked in comparison to Leif. Leif is just a, is just a wisp of a, of a person. It, you know, Raptors both in, are, off, are actually really small birds, so he's actually not that big. <laughs> I still almost, I almost tumble. And um, I think what I think what you see is immediately a response from from uh, from life, where it's like this this intimidation. Oh, oh, I, I'm so sorry, sir. Uh, and, and, and and Leif looks away in humility, seeing that Ratchet. Uh, I think Ratchet presents as a as a warrior, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, and that's intimidating for me. So I'm like, uh, oh, I'm so sorry, and try to try to scramble away i think ragic kind of recognizes leaf from what was our our session zero together um and you know you you, you helped you helped somebody and we we had 
some minor bonding. I think he's gonna let it go, but like he's very close to telling you off before he just, you know what? I just I want to get out of here. <laughs> As you begin to navigate away from Leaf, uh, you make your way towards the stalls and you find a pretty presentable strig the local Fletcher. This uh, very built, much larger owl person is currently uh, working away on some wood, um, whittling it down. And as you approach, they give you a nod. You put their objects down and put out your typical order. How many arrows <laughs> do you tend to buy at a time? Uh, I, I think he, to, to not have to come into town very often, he buys like three gold worth. It's like 60 arrows, but he's just like, look, I'm taking them home. I've got them for a while. <laughs> yeah, I think what happens is I imagine that this is such a regular exchange that you like hand a like quiver to them and then they hand you a quiver back and it's just full of arrows. It's Essentially, yeah. yeah essentially, the Fletcher's she... set up like a rewards card just because of how often Ratchet comes in. <laughs> yes, because three gold is not a small sum. Meadowfen is a very small village. In fact, you are probably like their number one customer. This, this is also a good chunk of the spare money I had too, but worth yes. it. <laughs> yeah, please add so many in arrows to your inventory. You have all of them and they're all very good quality. They are strong, pristinely. Um, they have been whittled down to be balanced. And you know that this strig is a master Fletcher of their craft. I know that we are here for an official meetup. So I think Ratchet's next move is to find somewhere out of the way where he can be a little bit to himself. But should an announcement go out of, you know, everyone gather around, he'll hear it and he'll be able to to follow proceedings. All right. So as you begin to step off the way, the camera kind of hooks back on to Leif, who comes back to uh, his group of friends there. And Hodge, the hedge, looks up to you and says, well, uh, I'm in charge of the, um, the announcement today. This will be the first time that I've done any public speaking. Uh, and you see this small hedgehog person begins to twiddle their thumbs back and forth. I, I hope I don't mess it up. You, 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 you'll be fine. Go ahead. Uh, um, and you see he basically pulls out the equivalent of flashcards and then begins to like read them to himself, practicing again. As he's doing this, the camera will slowly pan away, following a stall that's selling carrots and pumpkins, over to one that is full of baskets that have been hand woven. Where do we see Leon in the crowd? Um, I was gonna say that uh, with Leon kind of in sort of the city, I think one of his first things that he would do is kind of find like the um, entertainment board wouldn't be the right word, I don't think, but like like a message board almost, like how you see in like a lot of RPGs where there's like the spot in town where you look to find all the messages and stuff. So mm -hmm. I think that's where um, Leon would be because he's going to look to see if there's any local wrestling events, fight clubs going on while he's here. Yeah. Um, uh, so you... You're currently in Meadowfen, and it's a very small village, but you do see a notice board, and it is set up. Basically, there is a shed, and it's a three-walled shed, so it doesn't have a door. It's kind of just like a walk-in, walk-out sort of thing. There is a okay. big, huge pot of soup that someone is Ooh. stirring, and it's pretty clear that this is some sort of communal soup that everyone just kind of walks up with a bowl, and they get some food, and they walk away. There's a notice board right next to it. So as you come up towards the notice board, you can smell the soup. There is a pretty earthy, musty tone. Musty is a musk. 
Musty is such a bad word. Mus musky? Mmm, musty soup. <laughs> <laughs> I musky. love musky soup. So it's just basically very musky. earthen. It's uh, very potato heavy. You can smell the Ooh. starch and the roots mm. and the vegetables. It's a hearty soup. <laughs> and hearty soup. We like that. Yeah, yeah. Musky, it's... is there a skunk? <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is currently being stirred by a skunk person. There we yeah, go. There you go. <laughs> oh, the musk um, was coming from them, not the soup. Yeah. <laughs> So I think Leon will sort of, um, he'll go, he'll go, you know, yeah, he'll take a bowl and he'll go up to the, the person with the stew or with the soup and he'll go, what's the flavor of the soup today? You see the skunk person look at you, kind of raising a brow, looks down into the soup and says, look, just be glad that there aren't any questionable bobbles in it this time. Potato. Let's just go with that. Okay. Um, I I'm very happy. There's no questionable bubbles this time. Um, yeah, I will take some of the potato soup. It sounds really good to me. Thank you. She just kind of nonchalantly grabs a ladle, <laughs> then bloop, just drops it into your bowl. Okay. And then as he takes the bowl, he's gonna like slurp it, or if there's a spoon, you know spoon nearby or whatever uh he'll take it and he'll as he's eating it he'll be reading all of the different notifications or all the different uh messages on the board okay yeah uh, i gotta clear the dms <laughs> when yeah. you look at the notice board there isn't any mention of punch club there's no mention of the humble dome or anything like that but there is a single notice on there currently okay there's two notices one mm. says that Someone's lost their fireflies and needs someone to help gather them together. And the other one says that there is open recruiting for the new Bloom Order. Mm. That's about it. Okay. So, um, considering his uh, little adventure we had in Session Zero, he knows of the new Bloom Order. Um,. So he is going to, I guess, sort of take note of that. And um, is there anything on the uh, note where with the fireflies? Is there like a thing I can rip off or a, a, a thing I can get a hold of someone with that? Because I think that's kind of one he's sort of interested in. Yeah. Uh, on the moment. You would know that the etiquette is essentially like, if you want to take the paper down, you can. As long as like you're going to, in the spirit of it, either do something about it or you want to like keep people from doing it, right? So you can yeah, take yeah. it down, no problem. You take it down and you see that uh, it is essentially by someone that is, um, her name is Belinda. And mm -hmm. she says that she is missing three of her favorite fireflies. They broke out in the middle of the night, and she thinks that they might have escaped into the nearby forest. Billow was just there. Maybe I'll go and try and find these. And then, uh, is there like the. Is it, if there's coordinates on it, does it is it kind of back where we were, like in that part of the forest, or was it a different part of the forest? There aren't any coordinates. It's a pretty just kind of open-ended thing. You can tell it's a desperate plea for help from just a small villager in a small town. Okay. Um. Then that's kind of what Leaf will sort of do. Um. He'll sort of kind of go off, I think, and he'll try and find out some of these um, uh, fireflies, and um, yeah, I think that's what he, he wants, he kind of wants to do. He, he's got the kind of, uh, the blue, new Bloom Order in his sort of head. It's like, okay, maybe. But this seems like a nice little, like, in his mind, he's like, I'll do this, and then when I go to recruit for the new Bloom Order, I'll be like, hey, here's this person I helped. It's sort of his yeah. process. Yeah, so you begin to like walk away, soup in one hand, this like pamphlet in the other, and you will essentially walk past Hubert. Hubert, what are you doing here in the village square early in the morning? Oh, so you think you can catch fireflies better than I can? 
Oh, oh, hi! Nah, it, it, it ain't like that. I'm just kidding. I'm just playing. I didn't notice you there, sorry. Sometimes when I'm eating and reading, I don't see what's around me. Um, yeah, I, I think that this, this would be a good way to, you know, I saw the blue mortar thing. Maybe I might join that, maybe, but I'd like to do something nice for this town. Seems like a really nice town. Kind of, you know, get the word out that I'm sort of a nice guy. I mean, you can help me too, and you can also be a really nice guy as well. Sounds good. All right, and it it's to the forest, so I'm going to the closest forest that I know. I don't exactly know what forest it is. As you make this declaration, you see a commotion beginning to erupt. A wounded strig woman begins to limp into the square. You see that she's bloodied and her tawny feathers are singed and flecked with ash and soot. She's staggering, catching herself on the side of a well. <sighs> you see her eyes are raising in determination in the direction of the town hall where you saw that gallus, the turkey person. Is this visible to everyone? Yes. All right. Uh, so this looks wildly more interesting than the uh, than the four kids in the middle of the town square. So Jack immediately starts wandering over there. Hey, okay. couldn't find the full art for her. I think you can see this. Ooh. Ooh. up for everybody. <clears throat> you should be able to see her token there. That is Kara Stormsinger. You see this, uh, this strig woman. She has an eye patch and she is dressed pretty moderately in leather. And she's leaning heavily on a cane. She uh, uh, grimaces, trying to head in the direction of the elder. The elder slowly stands up. Jack begins to approach. Does anyone else have a reaction? See that over there? Hubert? Uh, not anyone I recognize. Wonder what's wrong, though. Well, what do you think? Should we go? Let's go. Let's go take a look. Oh yeah, let's go. So I think Leif and his <clears throat> his compadres they're they're ignorant of the situation for a moment, and then people start to gather around this this injured person, <clears throat> and then Leif just stands there with his mouth agape, kind of kind of clueless what to do. And then Taj kind of nudges him. It's like, dude, this is it. This this is the chance, you know. Somebody, somebody's in need. So we all just kind of run over, you know, following the crowd. Okay. That's it. You see that the Strig Fletcher slowly turns away from you and straightens up to look past you over in the direction of the middle of the square. It's going to catch Ratchet's eye and sort of seeing everyone headed towards this. I guess it's probably whispers of like what happened and concern. Um, so I think this time he's going to be a little bit more like uh, forceful as he as he goes to the crowd. Move. Step aside. Oh. So he kind of like gets the gawkers out of his way. Like I'm trying to actually see if I can help. Now move. As you're actively oh, maneuvering through the crowd, let me get a perception check from you. This is going to be sound-based. Okay. I'm pretty good. Perception, that is 15. Okay, 15. You do hear someone, as they're kind of like moving out of the way, say, That's Kara. 
She left a, a week ago to go check out the fire. She okay? And this sort of like fades out behind you as you push your way through. People split, they move aside at your command. Most of them recognize you, Ratchet. And with that, they don't contest you whatsoever. Essentially, the group of you, the five of you, the, yeah, the five of you and Leaf's friends, you begin to approach and Hera kind of holds out a hand, seeking out someone to help steady her. She says, I must speak with the Elder. We are all uh, in grave danger. Leon sticks out his hand. She takes it and she leans heavily on you. You can tell she's very badly wounded. What happened to you? Fire. The grove. The grove has taken an entire town. As she mentions the grove, you all remember Scorched Grove, north of Meadowfen here. Scorched Grove is an expanse that was essentially the site of the Great Calamity, the last great fire that took Humblewood. The mention of it taking another village that can only mean one thing. Fire has consumed an entire settlement. From the looks of her, she barely made it out alive. Oh. Jack is going to uh, crouch down in front of Kara and put one of her hands on Kara's head. Now, I see why that's got you in a bit of a bother, but take a moment, take a breath. If you die before your goal, you've helped no one. <sighs> then I'm going to uh, cast Cure Wounds. Ooh, okay. Go ahead and roll that. 12 wow. healing. Oh, that's a max that was a healing. max roll, baby. <laughs> wow, max healing. Can you describe to me nice. what your your magic looks like, specifically this spell, as you so, significantly heal her? As Jack rests their hand on Kara's forehead, it's a very soft and gentle touch, but it's still enough for the bang the silver bangles on her wrist to jingle a little bit. The rings along them making a soothing, almost relaxing melody that you can just on the edge of your vision, barely see as it washes over her. And as the sound falls across Kara, the wounds start to almost vanish like they were along with the song. <sighs> you see, she begins to breathe significantly easier. Her grip on you, Leon, begins to soften and she stands up a little straighter. Her eyes, with great determination, turn towards townhouse town hall i don't know why i keep calling it a townhouse um you see the wizened gallus who is sitting on the front porch begin to rise and opens the door to the town hall gesturing all of you inside Hera takes a step forward winces and leans against you again leon though her wounds are healed she's still very hurt Take it easy. We got this. You're fine. Got you. Thank you. She says directly to Jack. Jack uh, gives a shiny grin, stands up, and then starts sauntering off towards the town hall house. <laughs> Excellent. If you don't mind, uh, young sir, could you help me inside? Yes, of course. I will help you inside. And I'll and Leon will on purpose make sure to go at uh, a comfortable pace. Okay. You see, as Jack, Leon, Kara go inside, the elder continues to look at you, Beef, Ratchet, and Hubert, kind of expectantly. So, 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 Leif, when, when, when he saw Jack do that. Immediately, he's he kind of elbows. He he kind of has to reach down with his elbow because all of his friends are a bit shorter than him. Well, 
at least Taj is, being a hedge. And he, he elbows Taj in the side of the head as, as he often often does. He's like, uh. whoa, did, did, did you see that? That was magic. You, you could almost feel it on the air. That was amazing. I, I, I didn't know that, is it, is it Jack? I didn't know Jack could do that. Oh, magic. Wow. Oh. And, <clears throat> and I think it just kind of like, I can't help myself. It's like, let's go. And I turn and, and head towards the townhouse hall. Hodge kind of like grabs your your sleeve there for a moment, Leaf, and will say, Look, I've got to do the announcement, so you go on ahead without me. We'll catch up. All right. Yep. And, and, and then you see him slowly like waddle out into the square, and then he pulls out his cards and he goes, the new Bloom Order is currently recruiting new individuals, and it sort of like tapers off as he does that. Leif goes inside, and the Elder looks at both you, Ratchet, and Hubert. Gives a nod. Ratchet's definitely heading in as well. There's there's danger and there's fire. Ratchet needs to be involved. What about Hubert? I chase after. Okay. Excellent. All right. A group of you make your way into the town hall, and you find that there's this grand table in the main room. There are a number of different chairs. Very heavily, you see Kara drop down into one of them, and Ardwin begins to move off to the side. You hear the clinking of porcelain as she begins to manipulate different cups and uh, tea kettles, preparing a drink. This is Ardwin, the Elder of Meadowfell. Regal. For those of you that are Locals, you know that Ardwin has been the leader of Meadowfen for quite some time. She is reliable. She is wise. As Kara sits down, she peels up her leathers, and you see that the wound has been magically stitched together where it would have been a very bad uh, scorch of flesh. She goes on to say, sorry, Ardwin slowly approaches and says it's clear that you have endured much my child but we must know what happened out there please when you're ready she puts the tea kettle and the cups down emotions for all of you to sit Kara takes a deep breath and she begins to explain fires from the scorched grove have spread the hillside took ash barrow and raised it to the ground ash barrow that's quite close yes I tried to get here as is quickly it, as I could is it headed this way yeah I'm not quite so sure. I think for now, we might be all right, but it's too close. Ashbarrow is a neighbor, almost. Particularly. Ratchet is, is clearly, like, going through the geography in his head of, like, how far is that? How fast can fire travel if it has a good wind like he's he's just running through all of this in his head now her eyes turn back to Ardwin and she says the roads there and here are full of bandits I was lucky to escape with my life I saw citizens fleeing their burning homes but I don't know if they were so lucky Those that made it out think they might have been captured by the bandits. You 
see. Rather lucky indeed that you made it all the way back, especially so injured as you were. See a guilty look almost on her face as she looks down. Wish I could do more. But I'm not a warrior. You gave us warning. If the fire turns this direction, you might well have saved this whole town. See, Ardwin looks thoughtful, a bit distant. She nods her head towards Kara and turns to the group of you. This is quite serious. Perhaps we need help here. I don't know what Meadowfen can do against such a great threat. I wish to speak to the group of you and ask a favor, if possible. Meadowfen needs help. I would like you to travel. And you see that she begins to move back towards the side table. You see her pull out a parchment and an ink quill. Travel to Alderheart and speak to the Birdfolk Council. She begins to scribble something with urgency. Stella. Yeah. I know it's a little after the fact, but can I do an insight check on Kara? Yeah, absolutely. Anybody can do uh, for this game. If you ever want to do basically like a vibe check or a gut feeling about something, feel free to interject at any point uh, and you are more than welcome to roll an insight check. So anybody that wants to do an insight check right now, like Oof. if you feel like you're suspicious or you want more information, you can definitely do that. Rolled a four. Four from Jack, a five from Leon. How uh, do you do the blessings of this? Uh, so for blessings, uh, honestly, like because it's a streamed game, we have a set number of time. If it were an in-person game, I might do it a little differently. But for the sake of time, if you want to use a blessing, you can do it after the fact. So the way it works is you'll basically re-roll. So in roll 20, currently some people's rolls are showing both of them. You would just roll again and then we'll take the new entry. And I will use the uh, blessing that Geek Dice was so kind to give me. Thank you, Geek Dice. Thank you, thank you. So go ahead and roll again. You're 11, you're 11 four this time. Four turns into an 11. Okay. Jack and Leon, as you're looking at Kara, just trying to understand her a little more, you can tell that she has a great burden on her shoulders. She brought terrible news, and you could see she's exhausted. Even with the healing spell, she's ragged. She probably ran as fast and as hard as she could to make her way here. She looks like she's about to pass out at any moment. Other than that, you can't really glean anything else. With Leon, it's more of a, um, just a naivety, I think, a little bit from him. Um, this is his kind of first big adventure out. And by the way that she... I'm, I'm sorry, is the um, person we helped... Um, did, I, did I mispronounce? Is uh, it, is, it's is Kara, it? yeah. Kara? Kara? Okay, Kara. Um, <clears throat> by, looking, by looking at her, I think he is just more concerned about, like, the way that she's looking and the way that her, her body language is. It's just... He can't discern in his in his brain why she would lie or say anything weird about this mm -hmm. and i think he's more concerned about trying to calm her down make her feel better kind of going off of what ratchet had said of like hey you you said all this stuff you know you 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 brought it all of uh you brought it to our attention like 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 Ratchet said and you know i feel bad too that you couldn't save more people there but you may have just saved God knows how many other lands, cities, by survive you survived. You helping us here is gonna help so many people. And that's kind of his vibe. He's gonna be yeah. She gnaws at that. Uh, and one last thing, Jack will just give Leon a little pat on the shoulder and say, "Kind words, but praise does not ease a guilty conscience." Can't hurt. Surviving alone is uh, 
a task greater than you'd expect. More than you'll know. You see that Ardwin finishes scribbling on the parchment and folds it up, begins to approach the table and just vaguely holds it out to all of you, says, I would like you to speak to the Birdful Council, inform them of Ash Barrow's destruction and the bandit activity near Meadowfen. I do believe that with Kara out of commission, might not have anyone else suitable for this mission. So Leif takes it and glances at it for a moment, just kind of scans the words and then immediately passes it to Jack <clears throat> as if exuding that there's some, there's, there's this great confidence in Jack's abilities to do practically anything. <laughs> How uh, old and dusty is this map? <laughs> map it's what a way to put that (laughs) um so the uh parchment is actually a letter parchment okay uh the letter essentially details what this conversation just had mentions that ash barrow has been taken by the grove and that there is heightened bandit activity and it's basically begging for help and it is signed by ardwin it has her seal how, on it. How clean and or expensive does this paper look? Oh, this no. Parchment? It's dirty. It's ragged. You can tell that if it weren't for the stamp that's on it, it'd probably look like, you know, just a piece of paper someone found on the side of a tavern. So Jack just pinches it in the corner with their claws, looks over to Hubert, the uh, fully armed combat looking one, and just passes them the letter without any words. <laughs> Okay, so this letter begging the Alder Heart Birdful Council for help. This letter is folded up and it's handed to you, Hubert. <clears throat> uh, I don't actually take it from Zanik. What? No. What is oh. that? Nope, 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 nope. Look. I can't Maybe afford later. getting Maybe. blood on this. You're the one in armor. I think Ratchet looks Maybe, at uh... the four people that he is being asked to travel with and the fact that they don't seem to want the letter and he will snatch the letter and say, certainly I could make the trip faster on my own. It's too dangerous, Ardwin says very deliberately to you. What would happen if you <laughs> fell? If the message failed to deliver? What fate would become of Meadowfen? Jack looks over to a uh, Ardwin. You're certainly trusting a rather eclectic group you've never met before. I get desperate times and all, but it seems a little quick choice do I have? If the fire was gonna get here before we made it there, none, but you could always wait for a merchant, a heavily armed escort. There are very few, especially in the wake of such bandit activity. If you don't already know, bandits have been targeting merchants. From here all the way to Alderheart, the Great Mountains, roads aren't safe. Without you, I don't think help is coming. And as for other options, you see Arduin kind of turns to look out the window, and you see Taj has, like, accidentally got tangled up in his tabard. His tabard is, and he's just, like, trying to, like... Grab his, he drops his flashcards and he's trying to like untangle himself and people are reaching oh. trying to help. <laughs> poor, poor boy. <laughs> <laughs> it's really endearing, but it's very clear that Todd is a little clumsy. I don't think we have very many options. Jack will study Todd with the look of a scholar for a moment, nodding silently to themselves. 
clearly the only option. However, this is a rather long and dangerous journey, as you've stated. Surely some supplies would help. Oh, of course, of course. And you see she begins to move towards another cupboard and she opens it. She sighs. We are low on supplies. This is all I can really afford you. From a different time. And I was also young and full of spirit. See, she puts down two potions of healing on the table and a dagger. The dagger is rather unassuming. It doesn't look like it's been polished in some time. Its only distinguishing feature is it ends with a pommel that resembles an eagle eye. Jack will uh, pick up one of the healing potions and slide it into the satchel on their hip. Does uh, Leaf carry a weapon of any kind? Oh yeah, we forgot to do yeah. descriptions. This is a perfect time to like kind of pass the camera over each individual person. What does Leaf look like, and what is he wearing? So Leaf or Leif, um, he, he gets it both ways from just about everybody, and in either way is okay. He often will say Leif. Sometimes he catches himself and he says Leaf. <clears throat> Leif is a dusk corvum, which is a raven-like person. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> very dark, <clears throat> blue, almost black feathers, standing five feet tall, very thin in build. Um, so so imagine a raven-like face, usually with a slight serene smile. You wonder whether it's ignorance or bliss. Maybe it's both. <clears throat> Thank you for the picture. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um Leif is, is generally very lightly dressed, just uh, robes or, or a vest. And what he carries besides his backpack is a wooden staff, not qu quite fully up to his height, but a, a wooden staff that's kind of shaped like a sword. Sometimes he'll hold it, hold it as a sword. Sometimes he'll use it as a walking stick. But it, it's intentionally meant to look somewhat like a sword. Sometimes he'll hold it like a sword. And you have the appearance that he's quite young. You have the um, impression he's quite young. Mm -hmm. And then sitting next to Leif. 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 I like to think that <laughs> the birth name was Leif. But as he got older, he was like, it's time to reinvent myself. I'm going to start going by Leif <laughs> and trying to pass it on to all his friends. It's <laughs> a personal identity. Yeah. And, and I think that's that's worth note. Um, the um, naivety, lack of experience, and lack of confidence is always quite evident in, in Leif. In fact, seeing now that somebody has taken possession of this letter and it, that it's a, a bird folk person, somebody who Leif is generally intimidated by, it's kind of like he feels much better now. He's, he's relieved that somebody's taken the letter. It's good. Next to you is Leon. Can you describe what Leon is wearing and what Leon is wearing? uh they look like well leon is a uh happy little wolf boy he um is dressed like a what you would describe as sort of a masked uh wrestler um depending on uh, where your um region of watching is from either luchador or um i'm not exactly sure if they have a name in japan for just masked wrestlers other than just masked wrestlers um but um he's got the traditional um gear on kind of like a lightning inspired gear um through a bit of background um that i'll go into a little bit um he the family he was adopted into are um mapak and so they 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 sort of helped raised him whatever there's a very big vibe of like nature and um weather and just you know the earth in general is just a big thing in the whole community so he took a lot of inspiration from that and one thing he always liked 
was at night watching the lightning strike around and just seeing like the roar of the thunder and seeing the lightning. So he was able to get a cool little design together of like lightning and stuff, kind of like a bit of a blue in the background, kind of like a sort of like imagining like a bright sunny day, but with lightning in it, which would be kind of contrast, which is what he kind of really liked having in that. And so he was able to do that. Um, a lot of the Muppuck were, um, a lot of them were builders and designers. And so he kind of took inspiration by that, by learning how to design and make his own wrestling gear. So the mask that he wears, the, 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 the vest and the trunks that he wears are, are night are there. And so he's got that, he's got his little adventure backpack with him as well. I think he goes and he probably takes another, he probably takes the other healing potion. Um, and so he just, he's just there and he kind of brings like a, presence you know every chance he tries to get he tries to like you know seem like he's a big strong tough guy and his whole goal in life is just to be the greatest thing ever he idolizes his his favorite wrestler of all time and he just wants to one day be just as great as them excellent next to leon is jack what do you look like so jack is a black furred and white accented Vulpin. Uh, they have a constant mischievous smirk, almost as if they know something that you don't. And they like to wear a very almost dancer aesthetic and an, andro an androgynous look. You can't really tell at a glance whether Jack is male or female. Uh, but studded all along them are Little signs of luxury, silver bells, silver bangles, and a couple silver rings on their finger. And occasionally, when you get that full toothed grin, you'll see one of their front canines is actually made out of silver, too. Excellent. Next to Jack is Ratchet. Uh, Ratchet is a raptor. It's one of the sort of hunting hawk kind of uh people of of humble wood um and is sort of your classic ranger the cloak the armor has got both a bow and a pair of short swords for combat um and uh, is a little older than the rest of the party he's 30 so we got some some younger folks like the the teens and what we would call like college age, and then he's he's got a little bit of a uh, little bit of years on them, but it's, uh, raptors are uh, some of the smaller folk in Humblewood. He's about three and a half feet tall, so he actually looks up at most members of this party, um, and notably uh, around his eyes he has some blue markings which. In the world of Humblewood, uh, he is considered what is called a, a wind-touched. Um, they are considered by uh, Humblewood society to be destined for greatness, but he doesn't put a lot of stock in that, and uh, quite frankly, attracts a lot more attention to him than he particularly likes. He'd rather... He'd rather have uh, have a little bit more anonymity than that serves him. Excellent. Last but not least, we have Hubert. What do you look like? Well, maybe we should make the roads not safe for the bandits. Well, we're going around... Um, doing descriptions of our characters. What does your character look like? Hubert is a swift strig, um, standing at about five feet tall, wearing chainmail armor. Um, with uh, a small a small sigil. Um, of a storm cloud with a lightning bolt, a uh, a tempest, uh, 
Um, description wise, his his feathers are kind of a grayish white with yellow eyes. Okay. So the group of you gathered around here. Hatchet has just taken the letter, and Ardwin, turkey person, elder, looks to you with grave expression. I am counting on you. So with the healing potions taken by Jack and it was Hatchet? Yep. I took the other healing potion. You took it? Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> there is a... I, rem- <laughs> I, re- I remembered why we did descriptions now because I was asking whether or not uh, Leaf had any kind of uh, any kind of weaponry. I think Ratchet is going to take the dagger and Leaf has has very much shown that that he's a bit of a more timid individual, and I think he is going to intentionally put the hand the 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 dagger towards Leaf and go. If we run into bandits, you may need something to defend yourself. So so Ratchet is reluctant at first but takes the dagger and then holds a dagger in his hand and then brings back his cloak and looks at the daggers down at his belt and he compares is there anything notable <laughs> about this dagger the dagger is <clears throat> very old it hasn't been taken care of in a while but it does have a distinguishing pommel it sort of seems to be like bronze cast and it ends in the shape of an eagle eye Interesting. So I'm a crafty person, but my craft is all in wood, hence my name, Leif Woodshaper. I'm of that clan. <clears throat> Looking at this and, and with my my knowledge of history and, and other things, do I see anything? Do I think there's anything notable about it? Might it be special? Go ahead and roll history for me. I'm going to use my blessing. Okay. Nice. Right, twenty-one. Um very nice. The twenty-one you heard a story once about a group of heroes in Humblewood. You don't quite remember the name of the adventuring party. You're very certain that this was their sigil. An eagle eye a group of heroes that played some part in trying to fight off the great calamity several generations ago nice nice uh th- thank you sir <clears throat> and i rub it on my cloak to give it a little bit of shine and i tuck it in my belt eagle eye yeah make sure you identify it as eagle eye in your inventory for no reason. <laughs> yeah, no reason. No Don't, reason. We'll never bring never. it up again. Never. We nope. we absolutely didn't describe the special details of a particular dagger for just just for the funsies. I mean, it's just a, it's just a it's cool a perfectly design, ordinary folded piece of dagger. <laughs> yeah. Two years later. Dot, dot, dot. <laughs> Oh, listen, we had uh, an amazing moment in our Saul Marsh campaign. My God, yes. Where something <laughs> happened in the session zero and it became game breaking three years IRL later. Oh, uh, yeah, it was it was awesome. I, write it these things nice. down. That's it all was... I got to say. Yes. Okay. Tell me, Leif, <laughs> do you know how to use that? Uh, yeah, yeah, I, I, I'm good. I, I do a lot of things with with knives and, and daggers and things like that. <clears throat> I, I show you the other side of my belt, and I have some some tools there, wood carving tools, also on my belt. <clears throat> it, it, I seem confident with pokey things. Unless you mean to torture them, do not treat it as carving. You point it and you thrust. Yeah, 
and I kind of full of myself in the moment, perhaps encouraged by Jack. I spin my staff around it. It's kind of shaped like a sword. And I kind of do a little bit of a, you know, a little dance move with the sword, like I'm a swordsman of some sort, you know, kind of touche. This has got to be inspiring yeah. a lot of confidence in Ardwin. <clears throat> I, <laughs> I, I think I'm somewhat emboldened by Jack. <clears throat> Which, which can't possibly go wrong. Ardwin just <laughs> sighs deeply from the soul. And she says, please make haste. Shall we then? Shall we go? I think we should. You see that she puts a winged hand onto Kara's shoulder and says, I will look after Kara and make sure that she is seen to given a place to rest. We'll see what we can do once we've gathered our strength. Good luck out there. Jack leaves the building. First. And away we go. Hey. Group of you step outside, and when you're outside, you see Hodge has covered, and he has just finished giving his speech. A few people clap, a few people approach, and you see that he's handing out pamphlets that give information. The crowd is dispersing. Hodge looks at the group of you and waddles over after he finishes helping them. Is everything all right? Um, y yeah, I guess we've got to make a trip to Alderheart. Oh, I really don't want to go there. Uh, but, but thankfully, I won't have to talk to anybody. I can just go with the group, and, and that'll be fine. <clears throat> where, where, where do I sign up? Can I sign up? At the mention of Alderheart, you see that Taj is looking at Leif with big eyes, and he begins to sweat. Are you sure you want to go to Alderheart? I mean, you know, because of... Exactly, but... Uh, it'd, it'd be fine, as long as I don't have to talk to anybody. I can just go with the group. Yeah. Um. He just sort of shoves a pamphlet in your hand, and it's just like... Now recruiting, new bloom order. C can I sign up yet? Will they accept me? Oh, uh, the sign up's closed, buddy. Um, oh. but we should have more sign up soon. Maybe by hmm. the time you get back from Alderheart. It's it's a it's a running thing. I always want to sign up, but they won't they won't take me. <laughs> a different reason each time why you've just missed the sign up <laughs> just closed oh you're too tall you're too short you're too hairy you're not hairy enough <laughs> how nervous of a person does Taj look Taj doesn't actually well insight check roll me insight why am I okay. giving you stuff for free yeah just give it to me for well, free I, I don't rolling. like the rolling well, dice well, this is, while this is being rolled I feel like this conversation and... very quickly became a respectful distance conversation. <laughs> so probably with the exception of Jack, everyone else has given them space. And Jack's like, nah, this is going to be fun. <laughs> <laughs> so that's a 10. Okay. Hodge doesn't come off as a nervous person. He seems like someone who... He moves a little too quickly and he doesn't seem to be very precise with those movements. You could tell he's someone that was who's... the one that was going to do the like public speaking earlier. Yeah, right? he just finished. And he's my best bud. You can tell from the way he's talking to Leif that they are very, very close. And his uh, remorse that he's expressing right now, it's definitely genuine. So, you were the one who was up on stage earlier, right? He stands a little straighter. Yeah, that was me. Do you want to know the secret to have everyone hanging off your every word? 
leans in. This? She, uh, pokes his nose. Then you'll have to solve a riddle by the time we get back. Oh, no. Uh, I'm bad at riddles. Uh, he, he reaches and he's like, okay, I've got my quill out. All right, I'll write it down. It'll be easier to solve if I can remember it. What breathes but never dies? What breathes but never dies? Um. Don't answer it now. I want it when we get back. Uh, okay. You see, he's like looking down at the paper, scratching his head. He's like, hey, Grandma, she's really loud at snoring. Breathes really loud. She hasn't died yet. Um, uh, no, that's probably not it. Um, and he just kind of like trails off, distracted. He's like, the luck leaf. Um, I'll be here It'll when you get fine. back. I'm with Jack. I like your new friends. Please, Jack's cool. Please take care <laughs> of Faith. Faith is a is a real good one. Okay, bye. I think you'll be surprised. I don't think you'll need to be taken care of. He just wanders away, scratching his head. So, group of you have been giving an immense task. Do you want to head out immediately? Is there anything that you want to do before you leave Meadowfen? I'm always ready to leave Meadowfen. <laughs> I imagine like the camera just like pans and it looks at the gate that's outside, like surrounding Meadowfen, and Ratchet is just standing by the exit waiting for everyone else <laughs> i'm surprised ratchet isn't immediately trying to solve the riddle <laughs> I, I think no one was in the personal space that's the thing yeah, i said it very loudly <laughs> <laughs> uh for the reference of our characters because i feel like this is something that they would at least in general terms be aware of how long would a trip to Alderheart usually take? Is this like a week's journey, a month's journey? You would know like that to it's puzzle path. <laughs> um, you would know that traveling to Alderheart would <clears throat> take about two weeks. Okay. But given the fact that there are bandits on the roads. This might slow it down mm -hmm. and make it very dangerous. So is there the opportunity for transportation, like routine carriage, stagecoach kind of thing? Mm. Is that an option? All the way out here? No. Unfortunately not. Closer to Alderheart, maybe. Yeah, the, uh, the merchants that uh, Jack had been traveling with had split off at the intersection. Mm-hmm. All their heart. Well, I, I guess maybe we should buy food, right? That'd be a bad idea. I mean, I don't think there's a lot of places to buy food along the way. And actually, what do I know of major settlements between here and Alderheart? I see there's at least one dot on the road. Yeah, uh, go ahead and roll me survival. I'm scratching my I'm head like... as I don't know. And I say, oh, wait a second. 20. Are you going to say something, Matt? Uh, resolve that first, and then I'll, okay. I'll give my rest. Yes. Uh, so, you know, along the way, that there is a village by the name of Winnowing Reach. Uh, it is essentially that next pip east of Meadowfen. Know that it's a recently new development. Um, and it started out as a modest outpost, basically on the edge of a swamp. So that is probably a good place for you to stop. 
Yeah. So okay. I'll, I'll mention that. I turned to, to look to, to Leon. There's at least one place, mm -hmm. maybe a few days away, but yeah, I think food. Yeah. Uh, I, I, think go, I think going on a trip like that would be a really good idea to at least get something extra because you never know where it'll be. Uh, Ratchet is thinking about the matter of food in a very different way in that he's expecting to forest, forage or hunt for food along the way. So I also wanted to do a survival check, but instead of uh, knowing so much about like the, the places, he wants to know like what kind of food sources would we expect to run into along this path? Yeah, go ahead and... and that is a 16. Perfect. For the 16, you know that uh, from here to Winnowing Reach... There are plenty of grubs, there are plenty of roots, there are plenty of mushrooms, berries, uh, a lot of essentially like forageable things. For hunting, uh, there are fireflies, there are various types of bugs that you can hunt down as well for protein. Um, yeah, that, that'll probably be it. And also, like, small lizards, if you wanted to get those as well. Plenty nice. of options. So you should all have rations, essentially. That would be a pretty healthy amount to get you to Winnowing Reach, even without any foraging or hunting. So, considering these uh, banded infested roads, Jack looks over the group. How many of you have actually traveled through a forest before? Besides Grandfather over there. Well, yeah. Says looking over at Ratchet, the clear ranger. Damn, not a grandfather. <laughs> the clear ranger, the clear, the clear elder of the group. <laughs> you used to live there? Well, then we won't hope be hopefully lost. Hey. As y'all begin to make your way out heading east, who would like to lead the party through the wilderness? Are we going through the woods? No, you're following the road unless you yeah, want so to. Yeah, so it's just not. like open plains here, right? There, yeah, there is an active road. You can avoid the road if you want. That's definitely a choice. In fact, I should ask that. Do you want to go by road or take the off-road path? Jack would suggest avoiding the road. The rest of the group. I don't know how much time that saves us. I know you're thinking bandits, but I mean, bandits will set up camp away from the road and then go to the road for their their banditry. At least that's what I would think. So I don't know if avoiding it is just going to run us into their camps, which might even be a worse situation. Uh, uh, so you don't know how to go see, through the woods fast. You're... See, I think you're muted. Abby? I don't think oh, it's me. so much a matter of yeah, I don't think it's so much a matter of going through the woods quickly as it is the road is more or less a straight path. Going through the woods actually makes our route longer in many ways. There could be a whole bunch of them in their little camp versus maybe one or two that we find on the road. I think we're kind of talking amongst ourselves as we <clears throat> begin down the road. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, if no one else wants to, Leon can lead. Well, we have to decide if we're using roads or not. Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> okay. Um, I'm Leon himself is good with either one, honestly. He he's traveled through f deep forests, off road, on road, so whatever. So it sounds it like Ratchet's vote is road. Leon is abstaining. Jack is forest. So it's up to Leaf and Hubert. Forest. Forest game trails. We're going to be foraging right. and hunting along the way. Now. Then uh, Jack will be leading. Okay. Because I have bandit roots. 
Okay, can you nice. post that? Bandit Roots, this is part of your background as the bandit defector. Nobody knows that yet. Uh, as someone who <laughs> once assisted in countless highway robberies, you're familiar with the roads of the wood and escape paths by bandits. When you are not in combat, you and companions you lead can travel between locations that cut through forested areas twice as fast as your speed would allow normally. Nice. Okay, I'll need a survival check from you. Hey, I am rolling. 22. Wow. Holy nice. shit. Level one, rolling a 22. That's bananas. Okay. Pretty good at survival. A group of you begin to make your way from Meadow Fen. It's really loud. Away from Meadow What's wrong Fen. with countless highway robberies? <laughs> Ratchet and Jack would be have the higher survival <laughs> plus four proficient. Mm -hmm. uh, as you begin to make for the off-road path, you find that dense foliage wraps around you. Jack manages to lead you through the forest through the wild here with great proficiency. Perhaps uncannily, perhaps uncharacteristically, Jack looks in her element. She looks like she knows what she's doing. I, I want to make an insight, see if I can figure out, like, you're a little too good at this. Um, I will, uh, one moment before you roll that, okay. um, Jack, are you doing, mm -hmm. how are you presenting yourself here? I shouldn't speak for your behalf. Um, you are excelling uh, at this. What are you doing? What does this look like? Jack is moving forward confidently. They aren't like they're keeping aware of themselves, but you don't see them excessively looking around or worried. It's like someone who's traveled a path a hundred times. But you rolled a seven, Ratchet. Not a not a great insight. I think it's a bit Come hard. On. Yeah, he, he knows this was like the back of his wing. Let's go. Uh, let's see. As as you're beginning to make Refer. your way, yeah, prefer. <laughs> um, as you head out, it isn't more than an hour that passes by, or. You stumble onto something. Uh oh. Path ahead, there are people. I saw a joke and I was like, five of them? Who oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Don't mind me. People. <laughs> we, we... <laughs> Oh god, five enemies randomly appeared exactly where we're standing. <laughs> yes. Oh crap! Are we the enemies? <laughs> you see that there are that four yet. hooded figures gesturing violently at a crumpled body on the ground. While there is another a little further back. A small handcart stacked high with bags and boxes of various sizes stands nearby. One of the hooded figures goes to the cart and unceremoniously sifts through them, leaving fallen bundles strewn on the ground. They don't seem to have noticed you yet. What do you want to do? Jack, you're the first one to see this. They are about 50 feet away from the group. Uh, Jack pauses where they are, standing with their legs crossed and a hand under their chin or just casually tapping Ratchet on the shoulder and gesturing full hand towards the people ahead. Uh, Not a word Ratchet spoken. Is, Ratchet's going to notch an arrow and like look to Jack like, this is what you want, right? <laughs> oh, a little wink. <laughs> All right. An <laughs> arrow can fly. <laughs> Damn, no questions, just fire. 
Okay, hold on. This is the Hi. second time we found people surrounding a, surrounding a, a huddled body on the ground. This is confirmation <laughs> bias. <laughs> confirmation <laughs> bias at its best, you mean? That is so funny. Look at that middle token. Look at how cute it is. We have to protect it. <laughs> <laughs> It may be a lich in disguise, but goddamn, is it cute. Oh, yes, I have a wagon token. Cuteness always wins. So, is, is oh, Jack just going kind of, to kind of saunter over? Just oh. Kind of walk up and be like, dang. What happened? Oh, I just want to turn you. Come on. There we go. Quick, okay. flip it upside down. Nice. There we go. Okay. <laughs> oh, shit. All right. Fuck, you're just shooting it? Okay, hold on. God damn. <laughs> <laughs> you're fine. Well, I, guess, we I guess we'll do combat. <laughs> Stella, we have a ranger in the party. Combat starts 120 feet away. <laughs> God. Okay. Um, oh, I need to hit the... Oh, hold on. Sorry. Okay. I'm going to open the turn order and I need everyone to select their token. So click on your token first and then roll initiative. Ooh. <laughs> I Makes sense that I'd be last. I'm currently <laughs> gesturing. As soon as, as soon as I first saw all of our tokens, I clicked on mine knowing something was going to happen. <laughs> I just Way to be it. ready. Look, we could have talked. We could have tried to convince them to leave. But one of us has a longbow. <laughs> I, oh, I, yes, I remember yes. the engaging people in combat being a very different conversation in which light. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> See, Stella. Yes. My d, d Beyond is not piping into roll 20 for that. Okay. I rolled a six if you could add me. Yes, I can uh, add turn six. All right. Hmm. Combat begins with an arrow flying off towards the individuals that are very clearly bullying someone. Uh, yeah. Who knows? They might just be innocent denizens of the forest. Uh, so I have marked these individuals with different colors to help with coordinating mm -hmm. attacks. We'll say that they're essentially wearing something pink or their eyes are a certain color. Uh, so do you want to gotcha. fire at the yellow-eyed mop hawk, the green-eyed one, or the pink-eyed one? Got a little pink handkerchief. Uh, yeah, it's got a pink hanky. I'm, I'm concerned about the one maybe in the yellow. I think it's kind of closest to, to both of the... What we're blindly assuming are our victims. Um, so what time yeah, of day is it? Uh, it is afternoon. So yeah, let's look at the, the yellow, the yellow eyes. Okay. Uh, so you are. You can also move your toe. Uh, that's fifty-five feet. I think that's within range. Go ahead and fire. Yeah, that should shot. be within range for it. Oh, oh that's no. a nat one. Oh. That is a nat one. I think this is how our last fight started. <laughs> hey, did you fire you, uh, a warning shot? <laughs> you still got a blessing you could use over there? Uh, do I have a blessing? Looking right now. He just gave everyone one if you haven't used it. Oh, I, I have not used it. I would definitely like to okay, re-roll yeah, on that yeah, one. Roll. Yeah, <laughs> everyone has that one. That is yep. so funny. A 15. Wow, that's okay. a lot better. 15 is Would have lost hit. a lot of respect for you if Jack's like, yeah, take him out, and you just shoot straight <laughs> into the air. <laughs> You're like, that'll come back down later. That'll that'll be... That's just a delayed attack, okay? Uh, 15 is a hit. The armor class of these are 12. Okay. And the reason uh, I share the rolling. AC is just to help speed things on. <laughs> Fuck. What is rolling this? for damage. That's 11 damage. What does it look like? <laughs> ah. <kill> him. <laughs> so, wait, we should ask, is Ratchet aiming to kill this person they haven't seen yet, or are they aiming to in incapacitate? I think incapacitate. Okay. We, we haven't gotten strong enough confirmation that this is like a... 
that serious of a of a, of a there's a person action, surrounding so... another person die okay yeah, yeah that's yeah. totally fair uh so you're gonna aim for like a non-vital part but it's pretty clear the that leg. they yeah they pass out from pain they are on the ground uh, yeah i hit hard it's what i do <laughs> we all hear a blood curdling scream as this person just grabs their leg and passes out from the pain it is now time for combat hubert you are at the top of the turn order I'm gonna give old pinky a javelin okay I, I can't quite close that distance so um okay so you're 50 feet away would you like to move up first Uh, range javelin. I'm not certain. I think it's 20. I think it's 20 as well. Let me check. Is there a 30. flat range for throwing weapons or is it based on strength? It's based on the weapon. Okay. Yeah. yeah. There's a short and a long range. Anything past short is at disadvantage. Yeah. So I've never actually used a throwing weapon. Yeah. Uh, so javelin is a range of 30 and then past 100 oh. and. Past 30, it's going to be disadvantage, and then it's impossible to throw beyond 120. That was not the ruler tool. I have uh, drawn a oh, pink no. line. <laughs> 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 yeah, that's definitely gonna. That's definitely in range. Okay, <clears throat> go ahead and roll to attack, please. I can move all the way to there. Five. Yeah, your speed is thirty-five. Is correct. Or like the dominance of walking into melee range and then throwing a javelin into someone's chest. <laughs> uh, is that the right button? Yeah. Twelve is exactly hey. what you need to hit. Go ahead and roll damage. So to roll damage, you click on the word. Yep, perfect. Yeah. Great work. Yeah. There's a little oh. damage type on the character sheet next to it. Uh, yeah, it says piercing. Roll twenty. Yeah. Uh, five piercing damage. You huck this jab. You like walk up, huck this into their chest. You're like, Ooh. Yep. there's just a <laughs> javelin walk. sticking Power out walk. of them. <laughs> yeah, they are still up, but they look fucked up. All right. Anything else for your turn? that's probably it i uh, know that'll be it okay yeah. all right uh so <laughs> it is now their turn <laughs> like what the fuck's going on yeah you see that they are all <laughs> frantic unsure of what's happening here and uh they begin to move you see the one that is back here with the green eyes they kick the individual that they were harassing so they are now on the ground there's a pitiful little uh, as she collapses and then the individual back here is going to pull out their short bow. They're going to attempt to shoot you, Hubert. Bling. Oh shit, that's 21. That definitely hits you. Mm -hmm. Okay. You take two piercing damage as they pull back and the arrow collides into your shoulder. Take two piercing damage. This individual here is going to rush forward. They rip the javelin out, throw it to the side, and will attack you with their short sword. Yeah! Or an eight, which is a miss. See, back here, the individual with a blue handkerchief hops down from the cart and will begin to move behind it. 5, 10, 15, 20. And they will pull out their short bow and also shoot Hubert. With an eight, the arrow goes wild. You see it just disappear into the trees. Leon, it is now your turn. All right. I don't know if there's much I can do other than move, but I'm going to do that. Uh, but, 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 30 feet, so... About right there. Yep, that's 30 feet. 
can always dash if you want to. That's true. I could dash. Um, would that put me right next to the purple uh, uh, mapbox? So or if you want to dash, basically you use your action, and then you can move again. So it's up to your full speed if you want. So you can definitely be oh. here if you want to move back here. Um, you know what? I think I'll move over here. I think I'll move right here. Though. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Definitely It'll do. Be that. in range for next time. Very good. You see, Eon specifically. You see that there's someone back here towards the shadows. They have an air of command around them, and they're sort of watching from a distance. See that she has a very nice set of leather armor on, and she has a sword at her hip. She watches curiously. There's a hesitance before she pulls out her bow instead. She'll take aim at you. Uh, let me turn this off whispering as it always does. That. So you don't know if you've been shot or not. Ten. Oh, thank you for the raid. Hello, raiders. Welcome on in. Hello, Hi. Everyone. Oh my god. Big raid. Stella, without context of that being a whisper, all four of those showing at once make it look like she just did four attacks on Leon. Wait, what? Did I so, actually hit it four times? It, it shows us short bow, short sword, short bow, short bow. So the first three are the bandits. Yeah. Hmm, okay, they all popped up at once for me. It was terrifying. Oh, oh sorry. Oh. Interesting. <laughs> no, she pulled a 10. <laughs> Uh, so the 10 probably misses you. Yeah, it does. Yep, yep it does. Okay, however, she has multi-attack. No! She yeah, should... I warned you! <laughs> no! 17 <laughs> definitely hits you. Uh, you take five piercing damage. You see an Ow. arrow go over your head. You dodge out of the way, and then the second arrow oh, you gets me. you. Oh, no, you didn't. You... <laughs> that won't hurt. Oh. And then you see her take a step back into the shadows. That'll be her turn. Ratchet, it is now your turn. Oh, I don't like that. I, we we are figuring out something to do about her. <laughs> uh, let's start by moving. Uh, I can get 25, so I'll go there. Hubert, you all right? All right. Hubert confirming. I can, instead of taking an attack, keep moving. Is that correct? Yes. So you can. Yeah, you can use your action to dash. Yeah. Okay. Move Just up to check. your sp max speed again. All right. So I'll take a second move. I am like beelining for this archer. <laughs> Excellent. Do you do any like cool jumps as you're running? Like, do you see like your cloak billowing behind you? What kind of vibe. Any little it's, bird it's flutters full, as you hop. He's like off the yeah. trees. Yeah, that's so cool. Okay. Uh, Leaf, it's your turn. But before we do, <laughs> I want to say thank you so much to our Vaders for coming on in. This is episode one of our brand new campaign, and also thank you to Godfather Wraith for a card draw for everyone. <gasps> Oh my god. Including we love cards. Oh, it's coming in here with that. Thank you so oh. much. Zombie, this is going to be the game where we love the deck of this. Yeah, maybe. We'll see. We'll, I'm we'll going to draw out. the first card because Tim got me a card. Oh. oh. Okay. All right. There card for FDM, get Don John. <laughs> <laughs> this All is right. how we get five kobolds. <laughs> Not again. No. Let's start with Matt. Tell us. All right. The way to play this game is all you have to do is tell me when to stop. Stop. Say this is how we get five kobolds. Yeah. And Eat dice. Do, <clears throat> um. Get ready. Stop. Hey. Okay. You kept going. Oh. Listen. Oh no. It's called latency Not lag. That's good. All right. <laughs> Stella knew that the one you were going to get was terrible. All right. Uh, 
JR, tell me when to stop. Stop. Hey. Okay, okay. E. Can I have the card from the bottom of the deck when I say stop? Okay. <coughs> All right, stop. <laughs> and then that. zombie. Oh no, that's a dangerous giggle. <laughs> it is. It's great. Uh, no yep. whammies, no whammies, no whammies, no whammies. Stop. Whammy. There's a whammy. lot of red on the table. I'm just going to say that. It's a whammy. <laughs> we got flames. We got more flames. We got three flames. A lot, 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 lot of flames and stuff. Okay. Leaf. It, Leaf. It's your turn. So seeing this drama unfold and... um with with Jack right in front of me, I say, I, I guess these are bandits. I'm just gonna leave that question hanging in the air. You know, really, it's kind of we just got kind of kind of really aggressive. So I immediately bust out in the jog and I begin running. I think over here is this a rock or something that I could potentially get cover behind this? Yeah. Okay. So I begin jogging over in that direction, and I'm gonna stop after about 20 feet right here. Can I see this? Um, I think it's a Vulpin. <clears throat> what appears, I guess, is probably a Vulpin bandit leader. They seem to stand with the authority. Can I see them there? Uh, yes, you can. Okay. <clears throat> so I pause for a moment, and I kind of I look at my hand with, uh, and, and uh, Jack probably sees this look on my face. I've got this appreciation. I'm about to embrace magic, being being a wizard. And when I do this, when I embrace magic, when I access my magic, it's it's an emotional event. My eyes fill with awe. My all my feathers prickle up, like it's like getting goose goosebumps all, all over my body. My feathers all prickle up as I look at my hand, and in a mode of fire grows in my hand. And I'm just I look like I'm in awe of this magic that I wield. And I, I kind of reach back with my hand and and, and throw this moat of fire that floats over the battlefield towards this Vulpin bandit leader <clears throat> as I unleash Firebolt. And it goes, okay. woo. Yeah, I think- <laughs> Into the trees. It is an impressive throw. Uh, however, I think because of the great distance, she sees it coming. And you see just with immense grace, betraying that she's an experienced fighter she, she dives out of the way. Right. Yeah, she. Yeah, it's not even. <laughs> Watches it. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So this was an emotional thing for, for, uh, Lave. This accessing the magic. He's like, oh, shake it off and step behind the rock to hide. Okay. You definitely see Ratchet's head like whip at you when you use a fire spell, and then is like, <laughs> "There's a fight. We don't have time," and turns back towards her. All right. Is that the end of your turn? Yes, thank you. Okay, very good. Uh, it is now Jack's turn. All right, I'm going to start off with a Bardic Inspiration on life. Ooh, can you describe to us what very this nice. looks like? Uh, Jack's going to do a quick double clap of their hands and with fire in their voice say, do it again, but with feeling this time. Don't aim, don't think, just throw. <laughs> and the You can almost hear the like ringing of her bangles reverberate through your bones. Your muscles having like a, a bit of extra strength to them. And then I'm going to walk forward. Right behind Hubert, I'm going to cast a spell. I'm going to use Minor Illusion and conjure the illusion of a venomous cobra uh, in front of green over here. Okay. Cobra. So unless they touch it or spend an action to examine it, they won't be able to tell it's an illusion, right? Try to sneak. Here? Yeah. 
just within like line of sight of the uh green. Okay. Excellent. Uh so you make a cobra that makes sound. No. No, okay. That's why I put it in line of sight. Just like have it coming out of the grass. Very good. Like uh Ben Stiller from Dodgeball. <laughs> and that'll be my turn. Okay. Right. Super, it is now your turn. This uh individual has run up towards you and tried to hit you with their short sword. Hubert will respond in kind. Say, ah! You think so, eh? Uh, what happened? Uh-oh. Oh, okay. I forgot my character sheet. Hey. I'm still getting used to the roll twenty character sheet. You're doing great. If you have any Hubert questions, feel do... free to ask too. Herbert will use his longsword against uh, Pinky here. Okay. Okay. Wow. Twenty-two absolutely hits. <laughs> Beautiful. Dude, this that this person will be fine anymore. <laughs> <laughs> uh. I do have a question before you deal damage. Are you trying to knock them out or are you trying to kill them? Uh, he uses the flat of the blade, knock them out. Okay. Yep. 13 damage absolutely knocks them out. Just long, hits them on the head and they just kind of woozily waver and then collapse onto the ground in front of you. Good job. Amazing. Did you want to move at all? Yes. Oh, I can get all the way up in his face. Yeah. Yep. Not doing anything. Yep. I... yep. Okay. Uh, you just kind of like clonk one of them on the head, then you just stride on over to the next one. <laughs> That'd be so intimidating. So intimidating, just like this, this hulking armored owl just charging at you. <laughs> As you do. And the way owls run, too. Owls run weird. Like you see them on like YouTube videos. Like a dinosaur? They run, yeah, yeah. So. Oh. Uh, you see this individual here with the blue eyes. They look up at you with a sense of fear. They fail their wisdom saving throw, and they attempt to run. You will get an attack of opportunity here. Do you want to take it? Certainly. Okay, go ahead and do a melee attack. Okay, 11 is a miss. Mm -hmm. You slice the air where they used to be and you see a few of their like hairs and like fur kind of comes off and it just floats in the air as they Dodge out of the way, and then they disappear into the forest. Leon, it is your turn. Uh, Wait. don't the other yeah, oh, the bandits go? Gonna... Sorry, yeah, there's this... one more. Okay, yes, this one, let's see. Do they even see? Yeah, with a nat no. 20. <laughs> They see, I hope so. <laughs> they see the snake and they, uh, they jump to the start. Uh, what do they have? They have to use an action to look at it? To examine it. And if they succeed the um, against my spell save DC, then they can tell that it's an illusion. Okay. Uh, yeah. So they will attempt to touch it. They swing their sword at it. Um, well, then that counts as an automatic breaking through it. Okay. Touching so an illusion lets you know that it's not real because you just go through it. Yeah, so uh, they swing their sword at it. They see it, they swing their sword at it, realize that poof, it's gone. It's not real. Uh, and then... Your Jack's cackle in the background. <laughs> uh, and then they turn back towards you, Leon. It is your turn. Okay, so uh, Leon, uh, I think with that distraction, he'd like to kind of... Um, do another uh, sort of uh, uh, unhanded or unhanded uh, unarmed strike. 
All right. So, uh, do you want me to roll before describing, just in case it fails? No, go ahead and roll. And then you okay. can describe uh, what happens. Uh, seven. I don't think does anything. A seven is not a hit, unfortunately. Okay, so I think what I, I'm gonna like <laughs> narratively go. Yeah. I'm gonna go for a waist lock. Is I'm gonna try to take the person down, but because they're like still swinging their sword from the illusion or whatever, they kind of back elbow me. Not enough to do any damage. Mm -hmm. Back elbow me enough to get me like stunned nice. out of there. So then I get hit, and then I kind of stumble <laughs> back, and I go ah, and that'll be my turn. <laughs> I love it. The description is amazing. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, it is now this individual's turn. As she looks to the group and sees that Hubert clonks one, takes it out, and there is a breaking of morale here, she goes, Well, oh, shit. Not exactly how I was planning for things to go, but this won't be the last time you see me. She will just disappear as she runs off into the forest. Darn it. Ratchet, Ratchet will remember that. <laughs> Ratchet, it is your turn. No, don't worry. All right. Well, green is the one that's left, so we're going to we're going to uh take a shot at green. Hey. Oh, actually, nah, I'll take the shot. Yeah. You notice green on uh, in the initiative tracker. Uh, oh, that's no. a crit. Yeah, it's okay. Yep. It was it was fourteen. Yeah, it's fourteen. Because I hid the one that the initiative was tied to. Oops. No. Reveal okay. it again. There. <clears throat> okay. That is a that is a crit, that is a on, crit. on green eyes. Yep. For sixteen damage. Yep. I think he's fine. Yep. <laughs> Ouch. I've definitely never seen someone explode by an arrow before, but I think they're fine. <laughs> Ouch. And with that, that will be the end of combat. This blue one's not actually here. Okay. That was a good shot with that arrow. Hit him with the arrow, it turns the giblets. So, with the last bandit made unconscious sense of quiet falls over the forest here. Oh, what the? See the individual that's on the ground is curled up in a ball, huddled up, shaking with great fear. The bandits are just splayed out. See that their heads are rolling, little stars in their eyes. And to the victim, kneel next to them and kind of get a good look at him. Are, are you okay? Mm -hmm. I... She... See, first... Oh, God! <laughs> <laughs> you hear from the heavens a squeal of cuteness. Yes. <laughs> you see, from underneath the hood... Like, first there's one eye, then the other eye, and it kind of falls back, and you see your ears pop up. As you see, an Aluren. <gasps> a cat person! Ooh, look at and that she's cutie! So cute. I made the right yeah. choice engaging immediately. I yes, told you. You're right. <laughs> you did it. Oh, that is so cute. Virgin. I love the art so much. They're so fluffy. Look at that. <laughs> Must protect. Good work, everyone. Just hear yeah. a very tiny. Who helped me? Must protect the cuteness. The precious. Uh, Here, let, let me help you get up. Uh, she warily looks around at the group of you, sees the bandits taken out. Um, oh, okay. Please don't hurt me. No, we're, we're friends. She, she takes your hand and she stands up. Kind of step back, give her space. Yeah, she kind of moves with you, actually. She doesn't want to stand anywhere close to these bandits. So as you back up, she backs up with you. Yep. Yeah, and she, she's currently looking at Leaf, right? Yes. 
She has her hand in Leaf's and she's looking at Leaf. Uh, Jack's going to step behind her and pulling a rapier out of who knows where. Uh, who to grow these bandits on the ground? Like, execute them? Yes. Without talking to the party? Yes. Unless someone tries to stop her as she pulls out her blade. Okay. I think that Leon will go right behind and he'll be like, w what are you doing? Don't have time to take them back. We can't just let them go. So, question: <clears throat> What is what is the the social expectation? We're all members of a local community. What is the normal fate of of a bandit? What does the news tell us? Well, you would know that bandits do kill people. They kidnap people as well. Um, like, there are the perch guard who are essentially uh, bird folk, a, a bird folk order of guards and soldiers that go around trying to help bring order to Humblewood. They do kill bandits. That is absolutely a thing. <clears throat> Is it more or less su summary execution is is common? Any it would depend. That is killed? It would really depend. <clears throat> um, and I guess I look at at our, our new friend, this person that was a victim, either from their wounds or what we saw coming up, do we anticipate these bandits had murders, murderous in intent or they actually wounded her, her with weapons? So she's we saw the bleeding. green one kick them oh. while they were down. Yeah. So she's not yeah. bleeding. There are no bodies here yet. Uh, there's no way to tell if they're murderers or not, just from a glance. Um, so this is a hard decision. That did they have weapons drawn? They did have weapons drawn. Uh, you see that they <laughs> each had a bow. They each had a sword sword. Leon got shot with an arrow. Mm -hmm. After yeah. we started so, shooting, I'm, but I was gonna, gonna say, did, were, were the weapon? I guess, would, uh, if if I can interject, would uh, we have seen the? Would the, did they have weapons before we started shooting, or after they started seeing stuff happening? <laughs> well, they drew after they got shot. Okay, they probably weren't afraid of the tiny guy. No, no. but it was a hundred percent clear that they were robbing her. You see that she there's a cart off to the side here, and her stuff is just all over the place. Well. The lay for me uh, silent and humble, observing the, the adults in the room. <laughs> uh, go ahead. While Beth. the others are deciding how to ultimately deal with these bandits, and I think at least some of this is an out loud conversation, uh, Ratchet is going to grab the uh, the one with the yellow eyes, the first one that, that he hit at the beginning of the fight by the collar. And he's going to go, tell me her name, and maybe I won't let them decide what your fate is. You shake this person awake, and uh, you see that all three of these fallen bandits are Mopak, and this one kind of blearily looks up at you. <sighs> uh. Uh, go ahead and roll me intimidation at advantage. You have a clear okay, advantage good, here. I'm, I was like, good, because I'm bad at, at intimidating. <laughs> An eight. <laughs> oh my, my god, other the other was, was a zero. zero. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. I think what you see here is perhaps I didn't hear you. There's a lot going on right now. They basically try to slap you away, but they have no strength. They have no ability to get you away. They're just like, eh, uh, let me go. Who are you? So essentially, it's, you'll get there, but it'll take what some time. Meant, what he meant was, tell us what we want to know. It's like, let me show you how this works. Okay, yeah. All right, if you roll a 16. Uh, you see this Mopak here just immediately stop moving, going limp in your hands, Ratchet. It says, Frey. Frey Meriden. She's she's a real bad boss. She, you don't want to mess with Frey. Just let me go. Take, take, 
Take everything you want. Just, just let me go. You'll take us to her. What? Oh no, I, I can't do that. I can't, I won't do that. I think Leon will step right behind, right over next to say, "What are you afraid of if you were to take us to her?" Look. There's a look of desperation behind this person's eyes. Times are tough. A lot of us lost homes in the fire. We're just trying to make ends meet. Frey. Frey rocks with a team that you don't want to mess with. They're sending you out here to do these sort of dastardly things to this nice uh, friend over here. Maybe we might want to get a visit. I mean, what would happen, I suppose, if you were to <clears throat> take us, show us with you? Are you afraid that she'd hurt you? Oh, she'd do worse than hurt me. Well, I'll tell you right now. I just stopped my friend over here from killing you. Jack still has the rapier to Green's throat. Uh, so it sounds like either way that might be your fate. I... Um, Go ahead. I'm gonna do an intimidation check real quick. Okay. Get it. Uh, if normal, 16. If advantage, 21. Okay. Uh, it would be at advantage here. <clears throat> So, yeah. Jack is just going to growl and say, what's the count? How many have you killed? How many has your group killed? Look, I'm new to the crew. I couldn't even take you there if I wanted to, all right? It's, it's off the road. It's in the forest. Like, I... Just let me go. Please. I think at him, at him saying that, Ratchet will at least release the uh, the collar with a little bit of like a shove. Yeah, he just but... falls the oof. <laughs> yeah. So, <clears throat> only one that would know. I, I think Leif is having a little bit of maybe a, a spiritual crisis or even identity crisis with this. Being bird folk and seeing that this is a humble folk person, bandit or not, you know, Leif had never been in a position to really for himself judge the whole banditry narrative. Certainly a lot of people are impacted by the bandits and people are killed. But for, for Leif in this moment, it's like, dude, you know, to himself, it's like, dude, we're, we're talking about executing these people. So as I, I guess... My character sheet's not obeying me. I do a a wisdom saving throw. And, and I think my willpower fails me. And I just turn around and I face away. And I kind you of do, just... if you ever want to use it, have bardic inspiration still. Yeah. Mm. Oh, I do? Yeah, yeah I gave it, it I gave it to you during the fight. I, I heard you say that. I didn't uh, know it was for, for me. And actually, I don't want to use it. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> it's 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 a it's a role play moment. So so Leif turns and gives his back to the group. He kind of just holds his face. He's like he just can't. He's overwhelmed by this. It's a big moment for someone who's on their first adventure. Ratchet is going to stride over to uh, our um, have we gotten a name yet for the uh, victim? No. She... We haven't talked to them much okay. yet. No. Say that she's kind of like moved over here and she's currently sitting okay. down. Uh, Ratchet is going to head over towards her and um, not so much 
to her, but away from everyone else. And as he's going, loud enough for the Mopak to hear, is mm -hmm. going to say, make your decision quickly. Doesn't make a difference to me, but we need to keep moving. Make it fast. This is pointed at her or at the group? This is this is to the, the, the rest of the group. He's basically saying, like, if you want to kill him, kill him. I'm good with that. If you want to let him go, let him go. But we have to move. So figure it out and do whatever you're going to do now. And I'm just kind of out of the decision. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, the Aluren is kind of sitting on the ground and you see that she's like nursing her face. She doesn't have any visible bleeding wounds or anything like that. But you can tell like she got knocked around a little bit. And she just like looks up at you as you're approaching. Um, you all right? Yeah. I'm, Keep going. I'm. I'll be okay. Where are you going? We're headed into the city. Alderhood. To Alderhart. Um. Oh. Uh she kind of like looks around and you see her peer over the situation that's happening over there, past it, beyond it, over towards the cart. Um, if, if you are heading to Alderheart, then perhaps if it, I wouldn't slow you down too much. But maybe I can pay you to escort me. I was also heading to Alderheart. Ratchet, like, rolls his eyes of, like, of course you're going to slow us down. But that is smart enough not to say that. <laughs> and it's like, come, let's check your inventory. Make sure nothing important's missing. And we'll sort of walk her over to her cart. She'll say, Whiskers, thank you so much. Thank you for protecting me and my cart. My name is Eliza. And it's yours. His name's Ratchet. Ratchet. And she walks over with you towards the cart. She begins to pick things up off of the ground and put them in. As that's happening, what is everyone else doing? <laughs> still, still looking at the bandit, and I'm, he's basically saying, You have your choice. What are you going to do? I can't take you to somewhere I don't know. Do you know anyone that would? Uh, he looks helpless. Look, let me give you another choice. Jack turns towards the one with the golden eyes. You know what'll happen, even if you get out of here. I can make it quick, and I can make it painless. He... A roll. <laughs> Not gonna give us anything good. Why? Why should we keep you around? Look, mm. I, I can't give you anything but sword on my hip, bow on my back. Rob me if you want. That's all I can offer you. Where is you guys hang out at? I don't know. I already told you. I think you don't know where the boss is hanging out, but what about you guys? This is a new Leon, crew. Leon is getting a bit of indecision from this, so he basically is just gonna go. You know, he'll he'll see the others kind of walk past, and I think he's gonna go and try and help. Maybe figure out what's going on with 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 the person we've helped saved and all that. So Leon's gonna go. Uh, doesn't look like there's gonna get much of an answer here. We're gonna get any further than we need to. So. I'll I'll let you go to your own instincts, Jack. We're slowly leaving yeah. Jack to do as he pleases. You let Jack just <laughs> yeah. do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What? <laughs> yep. This is there. All right. Yeah. So you can deal with us. You can you can try and negotiate with him, but I already know what he wants to do. So, yep. Jack lets out a little sigh at everyone turning their backs to a currently awake bandit. And then 
turns back to the yellow-eyed bandit looking down at them. I'm sorry for what I must do to you, but I'll carry the burden. And then she stabs them. Hey. The bandit and then falls over. quickly and cleanly finishes off the other two. Okay. And I imagine as Jack goes about the dirty business, Leif just kind of turns and, and just peeks. <laughs> He kind of winces with each poke. <laughs> yeah, you just hear the stabbing through armor pulling out, and it's quick, it's quiet. There really isn't much ceremony to it. Liza also winces with each one, but she deliberately doesn't look. Hey. I, I, I'll do everything I can to repay you. I know the the road isn't safe, but it's important that I make my way to Alderheart. If there's a way that you can help me, I would much appreciate it. I was planning on stopping briefly in Winnowing Reach. I know the way there if you want a shortcut. Get a shortcut at this point would be the worst idea. She begins to like rummage through her things. You want me to pay you now or later or? Immediately, Leanne pushes the money back. No, we can we can discuss that later. We need to go there now. Okay. Safety is way more important than money. Are you okay? And she looks at you, Leon, where you're bleeding. Oh, this little thing. <laughs> Yeah, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm doing well, right? <laughs> I might have something for that. One moment, she begins to rummage through her cart. She pulls out a bandage. Do you want me to help you? Sure, I won't say no. Okay, sit down. Um, Pops down. And she begins to work, and as she's putting, as she's cleaning the wound and bandaging it, you see that Eliza actually moves with pretty deliberate strength and uh, control. You can tell that she's a hardworking person from how methodically she goes about this. This isn't the first time she's bandaged someone, and you get the sense that she's been on the road for quite some time. There's a little bit yes. of a, a spicy bedside manner. There's a bit of a squeak, and then it's like, oh, a little bit as she pulls it a bit tight. Yeah, we don't want to make sure it doesn't get infected. Sorry. Wait a second. This, this group over here, by the, by the, uh, the cart has now become a crowd. <laughs> <laughs> but, the have, but the bandits have arrows. Yes, they do. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Boy, I just need more than my thousand plus arrows I they already have, have. They have ten <laughs> arrows each. Oh wait, a few of them fired some. Um, they fired. Look, he's making a little cameo cleaning in I know. the background. Oh, pretty. <laughs> the way uh, that Lucky, the way that Lucky is pictured where you were, it looked like Lucky just over your shoulder. <laughs> yeah, my chair actually is like it has some depth to it, so sometimes he'll sit on the back of my chair, um, because he can. There's space for him. Okay, so you recover twenty eight arrows, total. Horrific. <laughs> <laughs> this is not going to be a campaign problem at all, I promise. You need to record mm. this. There, we have a handout, oh. a loot log. Make sure you write this down, okay? I want to know okay. the final counter at the end of the campaign. How many <laughs> arrows that <laughs> ratchet has just ported. Please keep track of how many arrows. <laughs> uh, they he, also he, each have a... Go ahead, go ahead. Oh, it's just he's already at 106. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> uh, so... There are three short swords, and then they each have leather armor, regular leather armor. It's kind of like scraps together. It's yeah. very bandit looking. I, I think my my uh, Look, he's stuff is his nicer. Bubble. I'm just gonna stick with it. Oh, great! <laughs> I'll just cover that. that 
I'm surprised that Twitch Qual- allows that. <laughs> Qual- quality content right here on Stolen. <laughs> He made sure to get perfectly in frame. <laughs> he, lucky knows at this point. Um, with <laughs> a flick of their wrist to clean the blood off the blade, Jack makes their way over to the rest of the group, heading straight towards Eliza. Eliza looks up at you with wide eyes. So you want to hire us? Yes, of course. That's the least I can do. You saved me, after all. You know it's likely we'll be attacked by more bandits. I know, and she looks down at her feet. It's precisely why I would like to hire you. Perhaps my chances are better with you than without. I'm willing to carry the burden, but if you are hiring us, it must be your decision. Yes, please. Without another word, Jack just nods and the rapier disappears. <laughs> Who knows where it goes? Who knows where it goes? Um, I will say, Jack, in this moment of what's just transpired, how do you feel? Does this weigh you down? Is this a significant moment? Has this happened before? To Jack... And from where they come from, it felt like necessity. Um, More than anyone else in the group, Jack knows the darkness within banditry. Not just the reasons that brought you to it, but what they turn you into once you're there. And there's a seriousness in Jack right now that isn't normally around. Perhaps your companions can't quite see through it or feel the weight of it. You certainly do. I've drawn the balance card. (laughs) Mm -hmm. You go down to, or if you're already below, up to half spell slots and half hit points. I knew I should have cast another spell. (laughs) Just leads you what you just did in a way that you can't really quantify, except half. In hit points. <laughs> yeah. yeah. If there was if there was a meter below me that could show how I felt right now, then. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So but half, there's no. There isn't. It doesn't exist. Um... Also, as you are rummaging about through their belongings, Ratchet, you discover a ring. Ooh. Of exploding. <laughs> this ring looks like... <laughs> an image that exists for this. Okay. Um... It is a copper ring, so the ring itself is not particularly fancy, but it bears an unusual stone. It looks like it's black glass, but it isn't refined, so it is a bit rough on the top. Hmm. Can I make out any markings on it or uh, anything like that? Um, you can roll investigation if you like. I don't remember if I'm good at that. Uh, I'm me. Oh my uh, god. Nope. Mm-mm. That's the nope, one. That's in that one. Okay. That's a ring, all right. It's a ring. It looks pretty fancy. It's not like expensive fancy, but there's something special about it. Okay, right. well, uh, I don't see anything uh, out of the ordinary about it. And if you're going to carry a ring, the best place to carry it is on a finger. So let's just put that baby on. Okay. And you know, it's a very pretty ring. So maybe you should stare at it and think about it for like an hour. 
<laughs> uh, because you're going to put it on and because I'm really bad at micromanagement, I'm just going to tell you right now, you have drawn the key card. You can add to your inventory a ring of force resistance. You have Ooh. resistance to force damage while wearing this ring. And it is set with black glass. Nice ring. Bet the, I bet the bandits wish we'd attack them with force damage. <laughs> <laughs> Magic missile. All right. So, uh, with a quick clap of their hands to dispel the mood. You said you're a merchant, correct? Uh, yes, Liza, Liza Penny Gleam. A pleasure, I'm sure. Jack holds out a hand and does a slight bow. She takes your hand and also does a slight bow. While it may be a bit scattered at the moment, perhaps you'd like to show us your wares? Um, yes, of course. If you'd like to make a purchase, there's like a little bell sound. Ding ding! The shop opens up. Uh, her general wares are pretty scattered. She has like pots and pans. Uh, she has some poultices, some herbal things that might be of use to someone who cooks or does medicine. It's just a bunch of like hodgepodge, what you might expect with a general merchant. Uh, Jack will purchase the, uh, the seasonings and herbs for food. Okay. Um, it'll be about three silver for those. Jack holds out a gold coin. <laughs> Not uh, carrying small change. She'll break it for you. <laughs> it's a 10, 10, 10, right? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Right. So you get seven silver back. Uh, and one of, purchasing, then. one of the spices um, is essentially a healing, uh, a modified healing thing. So it'll heal for 1d4. Ooh. Healing poultice. Anybody else want to buy anything? She has no arrows. <laughs> ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> there are, are there more healing poultices? No, that was the only one. Oh, okay, cool. But there are pots. Spoons. You never know when you might need a pot. Assuming people don't need anything, uh, she'll basically close up everything and say, "Um, if you need to take a breather, we can." can uh, maybe cook something up but she looks kind of ruefully over at the bodies perhaps we should keep going best not to linger too close to the dead lest you wish to join them yeah and we'll say that the effects of a short rest can take place from all of the looting and like opening up shop and just doing transactions and stuff. So if anybody wants to roll hit dice, you can definitely do that before we move on. I think I'll be doing that. Hey, look, four health. Man, nice. I suddenly feel like I'm half better. <laughs> wow. All right. Cool. Nice. More than I needed, wow. but I'll take it. <laughs> that was full. That was that was You're maximum. feeling great. Okay, great. Oh, I feel hmm. better already. As the group continues on the road, oh, not on the road specifically. Actually, you do have a choice well, here. Do you want to go back? If we've got a card following us. Yeah. So you see that as Eliza begins pulling the cart behind her, this is going to significantly reduce the speed in which you're traveling. See that she's struggling a little bit. She's very small. She's like two and a half feet almost. I think um, Leon will definitely offer to help move the cart with her. 
Okay. Or, or for her with her, whatever it would be. Well, me an athletics check. Athletics. I can do the yet, for sure. Ooh, 16. Nice. The 16, 16, as Leon takes over, party gets to move at regular pace. Yeah! Well, the yeah. That's actually a mechanic in the adventure. That's so funny. That's neat. That's cool. Yeah. Nice. You basically, like, montage to Leon taking the hand cart and then Eliza just kind of sitting on the back, just, like, waiting a, and watching. Take a break. I got this for you. I'm and not a person kinda... helping. You know, maybe maybe occasionally pushing from behind when ground is rough. Mm -hmm. yep. Trying to help. Yep. <clears throat> yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. As y'all take turns helping, you get the sense that the cart's not really going to slow you down anymore. Not as much as it was going to, potentially. Uh, but you do have to make another choice here. She says, I know a shortcut. And it works its way along the edge of mock fields, which is kind of a swampy terrain. You should be able to reach the outpost fairly shortly. Perhaps by tomorrow afternoon, if you want to do that. Does anybody know where the bandits hang out? <laughs> do, which which way should we go to avoid bandits? Wonder. Dot, dot, dot. Jack does not speak up about this. <laughs> well, I like what Axe Million said. I, th I think she has wares if you have coin. <laughs> I think I think Leon is uh, for the shortcut. He he in his mind he thinks yeah shortcut faster. Yeah, I think I hang out by Leon more now. <laughs> I'm I'm for that. And I'm like yeah, what Leon said. <laughs> right. Shortcuts fast. Let's do the shortcuts. Well, it's that way. And she points over Leon's shoulder as Leon begins to draw the cart. All right. Ugh, all right. The montage here as the party essentially begins to make their way through, uh, through the wilderness here, skirting along the edge of the mock fields. You essentially see the party getting ready to make camp for the night as the rest of the day passes by. You see that the terrain here has changed considerably as you've continued along. Beyond lush green trees lining this path, there are glimpses of burned stumps and ash-covered fields to be seen. It looks almost as if massive fire ravaged through this place this bleak landscape is traveling for miles and miles as you begin to draw close to a swamp perhaps slowing in favor of making camp for the night you see a cloud a very strange cloud beginning to head towards the party. I need perception checks from anyone who would be looking up at the sky. I want you to know, Stella, oh, so... I'm never taking off this Eliza art from my screen. <laughs> you have access to that forever <laughs> now. Yeah, but no. now it's here. That's the greatest thing ever. Uh, here's a perception roll of 17. Okay. That is a... Ratchet, is it a? Did you do that advantage? No, it's I. I that was that mistaken. Oh, okay. Um, fifteen from Ratchet, fifteen from Leon, seventeen from Jack, eleven from Leif, and a twelve from Hubert. Jack, you are the first to realize this cloud is not a cloud. There are hundreds. Of tiny flying creatures flying towards you. And that is where we're going to end the session for a. All right, who knows Fireball? <laughs> Thank you so much, everyone, for being here. Thank you so much for joining us for the first episode of Humblewood. Thank you so much to our Patreons, everyone here on the screen. Because of them, all of the things we do here are possible. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. 
We're gonna go around and do some outros. So tell me who you are, where we can find you, and what your favorite part of today's episode was. And we'll start with Matt. Hey guys, uh, I'm Matthew. Uh, you can find me most places as B Street Homes. And uh, I have to say probably my favorite part uh, was getting to meet Eliza because Eliza is adorable. She's so cute. <laughs> She's so cute. Bella was not prepared for that art when it showed up. I just want to say, because <laughs> I only saw the token and I was like, oh wait, there's a link here for a handout. And I was like, ah! um, I will say that Humblewood, this game is absolutely gorgeous. It has a lot of art. So I'll be like putting up the art as much as possible for it, as well as um, just quite a bit of charm. A lot of art pieces for characters, for landscapes, etc. cetera. Uh, so I'll be throwing lots of handouts like that throughout the campaign. I'll just tell you that. Uh, thank you so much. Really appreciate it. We'll pop on over to Geek Dice. Hey folks, I'm Geek Dice. You can see me occasionally on the X at Geek underscore, underscore Dice. Um, I think my favorite part of today's session is just getting to know the characters, getting to get that first experience of the character concept emer emerging into the world and learning about uh, the DM and learning about the other players. And uh, I'm enjoying it so far. I think we've got a great crew and I'm excited for uh, the gameplay. I'm glad to see that we can do some combat. Uh, that's always fun and, and interesting, but uh, really enjoy the role play. So thanks for letting me be part of this amazing group. Thank you. How do you feel about the hundred flying creatures flying towards you? Um, I don't know. We'll see. I've got I got a few spells up my my uh, robe sleeve, so we'll see. Hey. Well, wait. You said there's a hundred flying creatures. Yeah. Ratchet, how many arrows do you have? <laughs> 106! 106, <Don't> baby! <laughs> <laughs> We're good! <laughs> yeah, you got six mulligans. <laughs> Don't miss! <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Uh, next, we've got JR. Hi! Hello. Uh, I go as uh, Gumbo. I usually hang out on Stella's Discord. Favorite part of the evening was again the cuteness, cuteness overload. Yep. Excellent. Uh, the the Khajiit, the first Khajiit we've made contact with the first one. Cuteness. Thank you very much. Yeah, I love Eliza. She's so cute. Uh, we'll pop on over to Vertigo. Hello, I'm V Vertigo Vertigo Cross. I am a variety streamer over on Twitch. To play various different games maybe some you haven't seen before so come check it out if you have the time um as for my favorite part honestly i really enjoy so in my mental perspective life has kind of become the uh, the adoring fan from oblivion of just they see this hero do something and immediately attaches themselves like yeah this is awesome I support whatever you're doing right now. Until and then you become a murder another, hobo, he, it's like, next. <laughs> and then another hero does something cool. Really it's like, I associate with you now. <laughs> that was my favorite part. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we've got Zombie. Hello, I'm Jacob. I'm Zombie. I'm Z. I don't know what names like to call me. I'm the lore keeper and Captain Z of the Good Ship Clip. I probably do too many clips with your own discretion. Uh, today, uh, I played... Um, <laughs> Leon Breeze, who is a wrestler. Yes, he is. He's the best wrestler in the whole world. I can show you why. Um, and I think my favorite, I mean, Eliza's got to be the favorite, right? Of all, everyone, like everyone's just, I can't not say that that's uh, there. But I'll give an alternate favorite as well. Uh, my alternate favorite is when uh, Matthew rolled a one and we just shot the arrow in the air. It's like, nope inspiration re-roll that and it was an instant crit and hit <laughs> we went from yeah. arrow going in the air to just nope they're knocked Whoa. out yeah <laughs> that was excellent actually uh speaking of uh cuteness and art and all of that i forgot to show you a meriden look at that I like uh -oh. That. oh no they're hot oh no <laughs> 
So uh, we will round out the later. evening with a scene. As, oh, okay. as we cut to credits and fade to black, we see an individual running through the forest, dipping and diving between gnarled roots. You see a flash of orange, fiery in color, as Frey Meriden escapes, cursing underneath her breath. She hadn't expected Sharks. to find someone to intervene with her plans. She won't forget their faces. Half of her crew were indisposed, so she was moving a little more lightly than usual. But next time, she would be ready. She wouldn't forget those faces. Frey Meriden never forgets a face. I have drawn the rogue card. Oh, no, a universal rogue card. Universal rogue card. Party has a nemesis. It's all right. I wrote her name down. She was already going to be a nemesis. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Godfather Wraith, for giving yeah, us a thank nemesis. you, Godfather. This is going to be so fun. I am going Absolutely. to be giving Frey her own timeline. So the decisions that you nice. make will affect what Frey does in the background. Thank you so much for being here, everyone. Nice. Oh, really, really. Can I, do my own? Oh. Can I finish? The yes, I'm so did, sorry. Did, I'm so no, sorry. No, you're fine. Please you continue. got excited over the I got the hella anything. excited, yeah. That's fine. I, I want this. This is great. Um, do your thing. So yeah, you could find me on Twitter at ZombieFighter89. If you go there, there's a pinned uh, tweet there with art made by the lovely Lady May of Business Card. Also, there's Google Doc, all the different videos that I've done, video editing that I've done, paid, not paid, uh, highlights, uh, clips, all that fun jazz of stuff. And if you know anyone who looks uh, like, uh, uh, if you know anyone who's looking for work for that sort of thing, I do video editing and I'm starting on doing clips as well. And I've done, um, oh, I, I've been doing clips, uh, shorts, excuse me, shorts. I'm starting to do shorts. I like to do that sort of thing. So. Go ahead and follow me. And if you haven't had enough of my face, uh, on every Wednesday, you'll see it. Uh, so this, I think this coming Wednesday is our Frost Maiden group. So you'll see me with his Bam Nash, this uh, High Pioch boy. And you'll also see V there with us as well. It'll be a really, really fun time. And then on the other one is Salt Marsh, which is one that we've been playing here. The one we referenced earlier, the three plus year one, where you'll see me and you'll see Geek Dice there too. And so there's all kinds of fun people here. Come join all of the games and the fun. Still support Stella every chance you get. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Thank you for the raid. I'm so sorry. We're about to end here, but really appreciate the support. We will be back with more Humblewood in two weeks' time. So catch us on the 6th of August for our next episode at 8 p.m. Eastern Time. Hope everyone has a wonderful rest of your day, and we'll see you next time. Bye!